don't tell me there'll be days like this. Hello? Hello? Oh, boo! Didn't expect to see you here. Well, me neither. You're supposed to be on that train. I missed it. What do you mean you missed it? You pushed me over and shoved Bertha in the guts and you missed it. Bertha? It's my backpack. We've been intimate for so long I thought she should have a name. Look, I'm trying to see if anyone's here. And? Well, do you see anyone? I wish I didn't. Oh, totally on man, typical. Hey, the plot's thickening, eh? I wonder if there's a phone box somewhere. Yes, in the waiting room. Oh. With an alpha I'll shoved in its coin slot. Rough. Look, I really need to phone work and tell them I'm going to be late, really late. What time do you start? Nine o'clock, Leatherbridge. Far, is it? Two hours. How about that? How about what? You're not going to make it. <laughs> You're killing me. Don't take your rotten hangover out on me. Look, I don't have a hangover. <laughs> with those orbs, please, you get less red eye with a flash camera. So where's another train due at this one horse station? Definitely at least not for another hour. Yeah, but that's not considering leaves on the track or any other such hazards. Look at the time! So what'll happen if you're late? You'll get the sack? No. Your boss will make you do detention? No. You were shot at dawn? No. Then stop complaining. It's a nice morning. Enjoy it. <coughs> I'm not even sure you missed your train. I didn't see the destination. Greensboro trains go from here as well. It might have been my train. That'd cheer you up. Oh, terrific. Why don't you help me instead of sitting on your bum giving that bench a hard time? Sorry. Here. Thanks. And they say chivalry's dead. What part of Oz are you from? Ah, uh, you have a for accents. I've chucked it around a bit. I'm from New Zealand. Correct hemisphere, though. That's something. Thanks. That's the least I can do. It's all right, it is. That's not Pierre Blue you're wearing, is it? Well, I'll have to shave. Do you like it? Oh, no. Oh, God! <coughs> Take it you don't. Well, what do you do? Do all these from the mini bar if you're leaving? No, I paid for it. Thought it might be the only breakfast I got this morning. No, it's okay. Did me good to skip it. Looks like you needed it more than I did. You look a bit better. I feel it. Mm, sorry about your shoes. Oh, uh, what can I say? Ah, brings out the shine. <laughs> Oh. So, what have you got against Pierre Bleu? Nothing normally. I just wish it wasn't so popular. It's getting embarrassing. Some of an allergic reaction? Who knows? Doesn't matter. So, Dr Ben, can I ask what brings you to this remote part of the British Isles? Oh, do you have a white rabbit as well? If only. No, oh, I am sorry. Was it somebody very close to you? I didn't come for a funeral. I came for a wedding. I know. I hate weddings. Terrible occasions. All that so long as we both shall live stuff. Three years and one child later, they're slanging it out in divorce courts, wondering who'll get the kid weekends. <sighs> so young yet so cynical. An incurable romantic, me. Actually, it was a fellow doctor that I trained with at King's. Finally tied the knot. Finally? Commitment phobic like you'll never believe. <sighs> never thought I'd see them walking down the aisle. And now he's married? She's married. Finally married. All married up. Lonely places, weddings. Yeah. Hope she has a good lawyer. <laughs> anyway, I was an usher at Trisha's wedding last night. Pretty big occasion. We ate loads, drank more, and as a result, here I am. In the middle of nowhere, 
nursing a mother and father of all hangovers. And a mobile phone that's scrap. You, you are hungover. <laughs> when are you going back? To NZ? Yeah. I've got a flight from Heathrow in two days' time. Ticket's up, and I can't afford to stay on. You don't sound fired up about it. No. I'm not looking forward to going home at all. Do you tell me why? Maybe not. OK. Go ahead, caller. You're now through to Dr. Ben. Hello, Dr. Ben here. <laughs> Hello, caller. I hear you've got something to say to our listeners. I... Heard of McBride? No. That's where I'm from. Little town on the South Island. Sort of place nobody ever goes to unless they're lost. And that's where I'm headed now. By Heathrow, of course. I came over a year ago to do Europe. On your own? Actually, I came with my boyfriend, Stephen. Our big adventure before settling down. So you're engaged? Not quite. But everyone in the town had us earmarked for each other from the womb. <laughs> anyway, Stephen and I got to Paris. What a city. Hmm. Very nice. And we were there in spring. It was, it was like being in an Audrey Hepburn movie. She always seemed to be in Paris, didn't she? No. Not in Breakfast at Tiffany's. You like that film? Oh, I may have seen it once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't in Paris in that one. <laughs> anyway, I was there in spring with the man of my dreams. Sounds incredibly romantic. Oh, it was. I've never seen Stephen so in love. What? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So, should we go and see the Arc de Triomphe, the Mona Lisa, or the Eiffel Tower tomorrow? This could be an I think I'd like to see the Eiffel Tower first. What do you think? Because that way we'd see most of Paris. Oh, sure. I think I could see it out that window over there. So what do you think? Stephen succumbed to the delights of Paris. Actually, a male nurse named Jean-Jacques. Jean-Jacques? McBride isn't the sort of place where young men get much of an opportunity to explore their sexuality. But the City of Love presented no such limitations. You are joking. If I'm honest, I think I always suspected that Stephen had other interests. He would sit riveted to an entire All Blacks game, but if you asked him the score, he never knew. And well, that's where it ended. <laughs> Let's just say we won't be sending out wedding invitations. 